called the Muslim Brotherhood is under fire in Egypt. But here at home, one American Islamic group linked to the Brotherhood continues to thrive. They're under the shelter of that wonderful institution known as the White House. And they're holding their 60th annual conference next weekend in Washington. As Eric Stackelbeck reports, they even have, as I said, the ear of the White House. A challenge to its future. Before President Obama departed for Israel earlier this year, he took time to consult with Mohammed Majid. Majid has reportedly become a trusted administration advisor on issues ranging from immigration to counterterrorism policy. White House officials have praised Majid's organization, the Islamic Society of North America, or ISNA, as a pillar of the American Muslim community. But according to one analyst, ISNA's agenda is anything but mainstream. We also know from the Muslim Brotherhood's own documents that this is a Muslim Brotherhood front where they state it explicitly in one of their 1991 secret memos. Ryan Morrow works for the Clarion Project, an organization dedicated to exposing radical Islam. He told CBN News that internal Muslim Brotherhood documents captured by the FBI name ISNA as one of 29 American Muslim organizations with ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. The Brotherhood gave birth to both Al-Qaeda and Hamas. It's also easy to tell what the Brotherhood's agenda is because they've told us in their own documents, which is they've said that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within. And most importantly, they say they want to do it at the hands, not just of the believers, the Muslim Brotherhood supporters, but at the hands of the unbelievers, us. ISNA began in 1982 in Plainfield, Indiana. A founding member, Sami Alarian, was convicted in a U.S. federal court of conspiring to support the terror group Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Abdurrahman Alamudi also worked closely with ISNA for years. He's currently serving a federal prison sentence for funding al-Qaeda. Despite its radical roots, ISNA has expanded from its heartland base to the power corridors of Washington, D.C. The remarkable thing is many of these founders uh, who've been implicated in terrorism cases, named as unindicted uh, co-conspirators in, in terrorism cases, uh, are now being con are now consulting with the Obama administration. Investigative journalist Patrick Poole says ISNA's founders were even given a tour of the White House in March 2013. When it was closed off to the American public, they were meeting with senior White House officials, including the head of the Office of Public Engagement, who said that ISNA was the primary Islamic group that the White House does their uh, Muslim outreach through. It wasn't long ago that the U.S. government had a far less positive view of ISNA. In 2007, federal prosecutors named the group as an unindicted co-conspirator in the largest terrorism financing trial in American history. The focus of that trial was an organization called the Holy Land Foundation. Its leaders were convicted of funding the terror group Hamas. The Holy Land Foundation was spun off of uh, ISNA, and uh, here we have the United States government going into federal court saying these are bad guys, they're supporting terrorism, uh, they're a front for the Muslim Brotherhood, and then as soon as they leave federal court, these are our outreach partners. That outreach includes a role for ISNA in shaping America's counterterrorism policies. ISNA President Mohammed Majid is a member of a Homeland Security working group on, quote, violent extremism. ISNA also participated in a 2012 review of FBI counterterrorism training documents. The Bureau agreed to purge documents that ISNA and other Muslim groups found offensive or Islamophobic. Poole says the fox is guarding the hen house. We see a, a repeated pattern from FBI reports, from Department of Justice evidence in these terrorism trials, that, that it, groups like ISNA and their Muslim Brotherhood fronts, they're here to Islamicize America. ISNA did not respond to CBN News's request for comment. As for the Obama administration, its relationship with ISNA continues. Earlier this month, ISNA officials met with Secretary of State John Kerry to discuss the latest attempt at peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians. The White House is not embarrassed about this relationship. They publicly brag about the relationship and the fact that they're going to continue it. And it's not just the White House where ISNA is making inroads. The group's interfaith office meets with Christian and Jewish groups around the country. And an ISNA leader even spoke at the National Prayer Breakfast earlier this year. Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News, Washington. Shocked? You should be shocked. But uh, the 
uh, Islamophile, I guess you'd call it, a tendency of the White House grows apace, and it will color whatever we're doing in the Middle East. We'll make some serious, serious mistakes in our foreign policy. We will uh, turn against our friends and uh, turn in favor of our enemies because of the in, uh, advice and counsel of these people sitting at the very ear of the President of the United States. And I made, I, I was told by our producer that I misspoke, I guess, that, that they were not doing their 60th, uh, it was their 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. As yeah. if anybody cares. Yeah. Okay. Well, coming up. <laughs>